my pleasure to introduce Shayan Zadeh. Uh, Shayan got his master's degree at Maryland, gosh, what, 13 years ago? <laughs> and and uh, I was trying to think of how to embarrass him a little bit. He was in my graduate algorithms class, but you know I could re recite his grades and all of that. But he did so well in the class that it wouldn't be much of an embarrassment. Uh, but I sort of see a, a couple of things of my interaction with Shayan when he was a student here. Uh, he did, was doing extremely well in the course, and I was trying to convince him to do research in algorithms. And at that point, he said, well, I'm already working with a database faculty member, uh, Dr. Chawate. And he said, my plan is to summer to join Microsoft. Uh, the meta point I was trying to make here is that he already had uh, visions for the future. He had a plan to go to Microsoft, get some work experience, and then eventually start his own company, which he ended up doing. Right? So had he listened to me and taken my advice, he would have been a, a star researcher, maybe in algorithms, a professor at a contemporary school. But instead, he went on to even bigger and greater things. Uh, after working at Microsoft, he founded a company called Zeus, which was doing extremely well, but profitable. I went to visit their offices last summer, beautiful offices in downtown San Francisco. And now he has a new startup, which he might or might not talk too much about. He, he says it's in stealth mode. Uh, I, I let him decide how much he wants to tell us about that startup. Uh, but in any case, the point I wanted to make was this is really an uh, indication that our students, you know, if, you, if you have passionate about something, don't listen to your advisors or faculty. <laughs> Follow your own heart, right? If you, if you don't have a passion about something, then sure, come listen to us. But if you are passionate about something, that's what you're going to be most successful at, as Shyam has successfully demonstrated. So delighted that he's, he's here all day. There's a student meeting and panel at 3.30 this afternoon in A.B. Williams 4172. You are welcome to come there for a Q&A this afternoon as well. Okay? So, so without further ado, I want to introduce Shyam. Now, he did take a graduate algorithms class with me. And there, students do learn you know, the Hungarian algorithm for weighted by protect matching. And his company, Zeus, does online dating, which in my mind is bi-protect matching. And he told me, no, 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 there's nothing to do with online bi-protect matching. This is a whole different animal. We're actually observing real users, looking at real data, seeing how their behavior has nothing to do with what I learned in your class. Uh, but you know, matching is still extremely useful. Uh, and I think he got a very good education here. So there's a nice plaque that we put together to, to, to thank Shyam for all his work and for his illustrious career. Thank you. I'll let Shyam take the floor and, and tell us about his, his life story and experiences and so on. Thanks. Thanks, Samir. I think he did my talk for me already, so I can I can step down now. Uh, thanks for having me today. I'll uh, I'll try to uh, walk you through how I got to, to where I am today, and uh, hopefully along the way, uh, give you guys some insight into the types of decisions that I made that. I think were good types of decisions and the reasoning behind them uh, at different juncture in my career because as you will see, it has it was never a linear line. And uh, as I went through school and education, a lot of it changed because I was learning more about myself and about the world. So hopefully that will be useful to you guys um, as well. Uh, so I'm gonna go way back, but I'm gonna tell, not gonna tell you how many years ago. Uh, I, I was born and raised in a very small town in uh, northwest of Iran, uh, right at the corner of Turkey and Iraq. So it's a very stable part of the world, <laughs> as you can imagine. Uh, nothing was going on. Uh, small town, not America, but Iran. Uh, and uh, the, the most important factor of the beginning of my, my life uh, that ended up influencing my career were obviously my family. Uh, uh, my dad was an electrical engineer, my mom was a science teacher, so from early on, I was around technology and science uh, from different shapes and sizes. But going back to what Samir was saying of listening to advice and not listening to advice, growing up in Iran, for some reason, every parent in Iran thanks their children. If they are good at school, they should go become a doctor. So for the first 15, 20 years of my life, the doctrine that was being really pushed into my head is, you make a great doctor, you'll have a good life, you'll, you'll make money, you'll be happy. Uh, that's what you should do with, with your life. And what do you do as a 10 year old? You kind of listen to your parents when it comes to these big types of things and you start reading biology books and those things. But uh, life has a strange way of moving things around. So 
as I started uh, growing up, the curiosity got a better uh, part of my life, and I got introduced to building things like this. And it was really, my parents didn't think that this is going to ruin their master plan of me being a doctor. Like, oh, these kits that you can buy for a couple of bucks and start building your own LED shows and start building your radio head or start doing these things. And there's no harm in this. These kids are going to get busy and build something and learn something. And uh, this is the beginning of the end for their dream. That they are still <laughs> mad at me for. Uh, but the, the thing that I, I have really tried to stay true to and has really changed my life for the better is having that sense of curiosity and just trying to explore different things and uh, get my hands dirty, learn by building stuff. And that has been in me from, from early on. And I don't know why, but it has been a big part of my life. It went to a whole new level when I got to introduce to this guy. Uh, this was again in, in, uh, in high school. Uh, and I don't know how many people in this room don't even, do even know what this, this is and have touched it. But this really changed my life. Uh, specifically, this little handbook here. Uh, I got it as a, as a gift when graduating in one of the years in, in high school because I did so well in school. And my parents thought, oh, it's a game console. It's going to just put these tapes in and play some FIFA and whatever and be busy for <laughs> summer. Uh, I barely knew some English. And there was no translation of any of this stuff. So I had to pick that handbook up and uh, with my little English try to figure out what the hell you can do with this device. And the, the most vivid memory of those years of my life is actually me learning that, oh, this thing comes with a thing called BASIC. You can actually write a program in it. And I wrote my first program uh, just trying to follow the manual. And instead of the Hello World in this booklet, they taught you how to have a program that prints out your name. And then you do a go to 10, and it just continues printing out your name on your TV screen forever. Uh, that was the first program that I wrote. But this really changed my life. And uh, this curiosity again, and just trying to tinker with stuff, God got me pointed in the direction of, oh, this is, this is a lot of fun. I can start printing my name all over the place, for one. And then you can write more, more and more interesting programs. You can have some of your homework, math homework, that you need to do. This computer thing can do it for you, and you don't need to use that stupid calculator anymore. And the more I played with it, the more it grew on me. And again, this is the, the submersive ruining my parents' plan uh, type of uh, event in my life. And all of this really culminated in me getting into computer science. So I, I apologized to my parents and I did some protests and medical school was gone from, from my dream and what I was trying to achieve. And I got to uh, go and uh, start studying computer science at Sharif University. So for those of you who are not familiar, Sharif is really the top technical school in Iran. and. Uh, I really had to study hard to get in because very few, the, the size of the school is small and uh, they just stack rank every student in the country that finishes senior year in high school and they pick the top 100 people that go to the school and everybody else doesn't get to. So it was a lot of work but it paid off in a big way uh, both in terms of the educational value that I got out of it and also in terms of shaping the rest of my career. Uh, Sharif was a place that I learned that Programming is not the end of computers, and there's some science involved. I started learning about algorithms and data structures and <coughs> methodically solving problems. It really evolved my thinking. And so now that the career path of the doctor was out of the way, the career path of this computer program is starting to shape in my mind. It's like, okay, this, this might be what I want to be. I want to write code and do programming. While there, though, I had the opportunity to learn from some of the uh, more senior students about actually doing research in computer science and getting more and more interested in solving hard <coughs> problems and publishing it and uh, getting peer reviewed and getting excited about really making the world a better place through uh, bringing innovative ideas to the table and solving bigger and bigger uh, problems. And I think I had two paths in front of me at this stage, right? So finish school, get a job, the typical path that almost 95% of people did, or the curious Cheyenne path, which was 
there's this other place that they do this amazing stuff, and all these books that we read about computer science comes from, and these you have these amazing universities. So again, refreshing view. I grew up in this small town in Iran. It's continents away from the United States, right? So all I knew about the U.S. was a couple of brochures and a uh, few movies. You know how we get introduced to American culture? You watch Terminators, like that's what America is like. Uh, but the more important part, the more the bigger draw for me was reading all these computer science books that were our curriculum and seeing where they were produced, who were the people that were coming up with these ideas, publishing them, and the third and the three thousand copy would get to a student like me in, in a small town in Iran, and they would learn about this concept and get excited and solve different problems themselves. And that that really piqued my interest, and for some odd reason, I decided that would be a great idea. I need to come to America and, and continue my education and become a professor uh, and do research. So I applied to schools. As you can imagine, I had no idea what different schools are, so the only source of information I had was rankings. So I thought, okay, the, the top schools in, around the country, I'm going to just pick them and, uh, and send applications. And, I was fortunate enough to, to get admitted to a number of them, uh, most importantly to, to Maryland, and that's how I ended up here for, for the PhD program. And uh, as Samir mentioned, uh, joined, uh, joined the school in, in 2000. One of, the, one of the things that you had to, so you, I've talked about curiosity a lot, but another big element of uh, my career, and I think a lot of students, especially uh, people in this room probably have gone through is also having a bit of courage, right? So when I left Iran to, to move to US, all I had in my position was a one letter of admission. It could have been fake for all I knew. I didn't know where Maryland was. I could find it on the map, but that's, that was about it. And really a backpack and just uh, heading out for a brighter future that in your optimistic mind is always there, but everybody else is basically freaking out for you, right? On your behalf of what if it doesn't work out? What if you, your language is not good enough? What if you can't assimilate into the culture? What if you're not going to be successful in this bigger, better school? Uh, there is always a lot of these trepidations and, and uh, good-hearted people that are looking out for you, but really just holding you back at some level. And you need to break through uh, some of that uh, by just saying, Damn it, I'm just going to go do it. What's the worst that can happen? I can always come back, right? Uh, but that's how I got to spend a couple of years of my life in, in this beautiful building down here in Amy Williams. We didn't have these fancy classrooms back when I was here, uh, so enjoy it uh, and pay back to students who didn't have it. Uh, but amazing couple of years here. Uh, I learned a lot from Samir and the rest of the faculty here. and. Uh, like he said, I was doing research uh, in, uh, in databases, and that's another turning point that's going to come back uh, down the road uh, as, as we move forward in, in time. But uh, one of the interesting things that was happening here is I was, again, trying to figure out, okay, what, what, the, what does a career look like for me? Right? You can't be a perpetual student as much as you might love that. Uh, and the path that I was on was a path to research and potentially becoming an, hopefully a good faculty down the road. And the advice that I was getting uh, from all the great professors is, yeah, you might, you might make an okay professor. You might be able to teach. I was doing TAing and RAing. I was getting experience in that. Uh, you would do research. You'd get funding. You'd write grant proposals. It's a beautiful life. Uh, and by the way, 95% of people who go through this path, they, they follow it, they follow this path. Uh, unfortunately, I have a knack for not listening to advice. And the main reason in this case was actually free pizza. So anybody who has been a grad, grad student knows you want to find grad students, just put something where free pizza is and they're going to show up. Uh, in one of these flyers that I randomly got lucky to read, it was actually an event thrown by uh, the engineering school, and uh, they had free pizza. That's all I knew. So I showed up, uh, showed up to drive for pizza, and I noticed there was actually a talk associated with this pizza. So I listened through just to be polite. You know, you just don't grab it and leave. Uh, but something 
interesting happened that, that night. Uh, the event was about entrepreneurship and starting companies and what they had done, they had invited a couple of entrepreneurs who were alumni to come and talk about what they were doing. And I can't tell you what the company was or who the person was or what they were talking about. Don't remember any of that. But that night changed my life because of what I saw and how that person was talking about their life and their <coughs> life. The, the only thing that I remember that really matters uh, for what it did to me was how excited this person was about what they were doing. Like they couldn't, they were telling me, oh, it's hard and it's you need to work really hard and uh, you know there's going to be obstacles the whole time a giant grin on their face like they're enjoying that ride more than anything in their life come back to your questions a little bit later don't mind uh, and uh, that was a very different why than anybody else up to that point in my life that I had seen talking about their work including my professors including uh, my parents, including other people who had day jobs. This person was just excited about what they were doing and there was nothing else they wanted to talk about <coughs> than the amazing things that this company was doing that may or may not succeed and completely be a failure and everybody laughed at them. But that's the part that stuck with me is you can be this passionate about what you're doing and if, you, if you're lucky enough for you to that be your day job and get paid for it, you should probably try something like that. And that was a turning point for me saying, maybe I want to be like that guy. I didn't know how or what it takes and what you should do, but somebody has done it. So I'm going to go figure out what they did and how did they get so lucky that they can be so excited about their, their day job. Uh, so pizza changed my life really at the end of the day. But that led me to learning more and more about entrepreneurship and the next uh, really milestone on that path for me was participating in the business plan competition here at, at the university. Back when I did it, the, the prize was 50k, it wasn't 75k, so this has really improved over the past couple of years. Uh, but it was one of the best experiences actually in my life up to that point because we put together a small group of people, or friends, and we picked one of their, actually my co-founder at my past two companies, we were doing it together here in Maryland, and we picked his research uh, work that he was doing at, at mechanical engineering school here, and we tried to turn that into a business idea. And we built a prototype, we did, a, I audited a couple of classes in business school here, learned how to write a business plan. By the way, that was the only time in my life I've written a business plan. It never in real life happens, it just happens at schools. Uh, Learned how to write a business plan, participated in this competition, got amazing feedback, made it even to the finals, didn't quite win it, but that, for, a, for a starting and learning about this in a couple of months and getting a prototype out there, uh, that was a really, really exciting experience uh, for us. And it went to show that if, if you put your energy behind it, there, there is this opportunity in, in a country like the US that you can do things like this and get to that level of excitement around your career. Uh, we were actually fortunate enough that for some uh, lucky reason we had people actually interested in investing in our company even though we didn't win the business plan competition we were I think third or second uh, when it came to the finals we had interest from local venture companies that they said oh this is a compelling enough thing let's just go raise some money for it and and do the business and that's when uh, I really learned about immigration system in the United States and how messed up it is. Uh, the short of it was, no, you can't. Uh, really, as a as a student, I don't know how many international students are here, but if you're at one visa, uh, the only thing you can do is work at a university for 20 hours, uh, and if you want to start a company, that can be done, uh, and there is no way around it. I mean, we're trying to do startup visas and things like that now, but in fact, that none of this existed. Um, so I was presented with a couple of choices. Uh, forget about it. Uh, go back to the career path and uh, stay a researcher. Uh, find an American woman and get married and get a green card. And uh, the third one was figure out another way of going back to that dream and uh, of building a company, whether it was that company or something else. And and I I, I picked a third choice and uh, it really involved 
getting sponsored by another company and getting a green card and then getting you know, taking another stab at it. Uh, which was actually a fortunate thing uh, when I look back now. If, by the way, that company that we didn't start, a very similar company to that started about a year later. That product is still out in the market, a very successful company. We unfortunately couldn't capitalize on it and do it a couple of years earlier because of this beautiful situation that we have with immigration in the US. Um, but what I did was uh, plot a path of going back to that and it involved immigration. I didn't want to get uh, just randomly married to, to solve it. So got a job at, at this company that a lot of you guys know. Uh, funny story about that, I used to have an anti-Microsoft band in, in grad school and prior. And in my <coughs> website at school, I had some rants about Microsoft. So on my interview day, I had to go update my website and go get a job there. Uh, but I, I applied and got a job uh, at Microsoft. And two interesting things happened there in that process for me. One, obviously, they solved my immigration problem. But second, this was my first real world job experience. I had done coding work for consulting here and there and uh, building systems or applications for small shops that wanted something automated, but nothing real structural, nothing about how you build a team, how you build a culture, how you recruit, uh, how you set up an engineering process. And at Microsoft, a lot of these things are done very well. There are a lot of things at Microsoft that I learned how not to do, but there are certain things that they, they did very well, and I picked up a lot of those things along the way over the, over the five, six years that it took my immigration to get figured out there. Um, Another thing that I did while I was at Microsoft, uh, I did an evening uh, MBA program, which had some benefits, learned about finance and those things, but also learned that MBAs are not worth much. So if you today are thinking about getting an MBA, I encourage you not to, uh, unless you just want to get a promotion of your job. Uh, but really, you don't learn much other than how to drink beer, lots of beer. That's an MBA program. So yeah, but. Uh, this is, again, that, that interesting part that the, the nice advice comes in, right? So I'm a 20-some-year-old person getting paid really handsomely up in Seattle, uh, lots of stock options and incentives not to go anywhere. The, the famous golden handcuffs are in your hands, and if you're, if you're quitting that job, you're basically walking away from a lot of short money. And but in the back of my mind, it always was, I want to I wanna go start a company. I want to I wanna do this. And again, a lot of your friends and colleagues are going to say, are you crazy? Like, who does that? Like, this thing you're talking about is not even a fully baked idea, let alone a company and a business and, and a career. Uh, and the good ones tell you to, to tell this to your face, right? They just warn you that this is going to be a terrible idea. You're going to be sorry. Uh, the bad ones talk behind your back. Uh, but everybody around you, unless you're in Silicon Valley and quitting a big company and starting another company, everywhere else in the world they will tell you you're crazy. It's, it's a terrible idea. Um, but one of the things that since then I've uh, structured a little bit better for myself is one of the philosophies that you can live your life with is actually regret minimization. Like what are the things that you can do that down the road you're not going to say, I regret not trying it. Because, okay, if I quit Microsoft and go mis fail miserably, what is the worst thing that's going to happen? I apply again and get a job at Microsoft or the next guy or Yahoo or Google or whoever it might be in, in line and in hiring. So the risk really, yes, there is a risk, but the risk is calculated. I can always come back and go back to what I was doing before. But if I never quit and start this, for the rest of my life, I'm going to be sitting there and saying, damn, I wish I did this. What would have happened if I did this? And Let's eliminate that regret from your life. And that's really what I did, uh, going back to that passion part of building something. It, it wasn't as much about what exactly is the company, but I think the biggest driver for me was, I want to build a company, I want to build a product that somebody other than my mom would go and use and, and say, give me feedback and find it useful, right? So uh, for, for me and my co-founder, it was Zeus. And it came full circle back to our education at Maryland because I had done work on uh, data mining and semi-structured databases. And my co-founder, Alex, had done work in optimizing very complex systems. Uh, 
the first business plan composition that uh, we participated in was actually about using those two pieces and optimizing ships or trains for minimum fuel consumption or complex systems like that to achieve uh, objectives that are really contradictory by trying to, to optimize based on trade-offs that you want to make in a business. It might seem centuries away from online dating, but at the end of the day, it's a complex system that you're trying to optimize for multiple objectives. There are some pipeline graphs in there, but uh, that the reason that we chose this space was one, we thought we could make a significantly better product, uh, bringing our expertise and leveraging the technology and the, uh, the science that we had learned at, at school. And it, it fit our passion of if we build this, there might be a couple of people that use it. They are our uh, friends and family that find it useful, which turned out to be really true. I'm going to switch gears a little bit and talk about geeky stuff because Samir has asked me to, to do so. So uh, a little bit more background on, on Zeus and the technology that we built there. Um, our principal idea of differentiation was that uh, actions speak louder than words when it comes to the context of online dating. So if you have used any online dating product, the primary experience is they ask you a bunch of questions, you answer them, uh, hopefully truthfully, and based on that information, they try to find the person that matches the criteria that we are specifying. Uh, the problem is when it comes to dating and love, we lie subconsciously to even ourselves. Uh, when you ask them who you're interested in, the person that you describe, and then you zoom forward 10 years and see who they were with, they're two completely different people. And psychologists have done a lot of uh, research on this, and the main thing is basically we are really bad at describing criteria for the thing that's going to work for us emotionally. And this happens when you buy shoes. The extreme example of it happens when you're looking for basically a, a partner in life. Um, so that was our main uh, really thinking point around building our product and our matching algorithm. And it basically went from forget the words, forget asking people, let's watch what they do. And the product that we built was basically capturing a massive amount of information about the activities of our members as they engage with other users and trying to build models that optimize for finding the right match for them. Uh, a lot of uh, really optimization problems, big data, databases, feeding this massive amount of information. So if you can imagine like the behavioral data we're talking about is terabytes of information about each person. Who do they click on? Who do they send a message? Who responds back to them? Who do they ignore? How long do they go back and forth? How many of these actually result in them going offline and meeting a real person in person? putting all of this together and building a self-learning algorithm behind it to really optimize this. And by the way, do it for 50 different countries around the globe in different languages, millions of people with different backgrounds, demographically, psychographically, and try to build something that for each person creates a personalized experience uh, that achieves what they're looking for in the best manner. Uh, it, it didn't turn out too bad. I mean, we were able to build a company Last year, we did over 200 million in revenue, uh, top 20 iPhone app uh, for the past couple of years, consistently 200 employees. We raised $60 million to do it. So uh, an amazing ride. I spent uh, seven, eight years of my life basically doing this and nothing else. Uh, but going back to that guy that was grinning the whole time that he was talking about this company, it was like that. I mean, it's a roller coaster. and. It's tough and you have days that uh, you feel totally depressed and down. But in the grand scheme of things, when I zoom back out, there's nothing else that I would do with that amount of time in my life. And I think I feel very blessed to have that in my life where what I do for a living professionally is the thing that there is nothing else out there that I would rather do instead of that. Um, so I did this for uh, about, uh, like I said, seven, eight years. and. Late last year, uh, we got to a stage that the company was really operating on an on a autopilot uh, from a lot of extents, and the strategy was figured out, the product was figured out. So we promoted our uh, chief operating officer to the CEO role, 
and uh, Alex, my co-founder, and I stepped away from the day-to-day -day at the company, so you're just board members and, and shareholders at this stage. The uh, company is continuing to operate very well. So the two of us said, well, let's take some time off. We've really burned ourselves up for the past couple of years. Uh, took, I would say, less than four weeks, and here we go again. Uh, couldn't help it. Really, that, that passion of building something, building an organization, building a product, building a company, building uh, a culture uh, that's bigger than individuals is, is a draw that still is, is really strong in both of us. So, uh, like Samir said, we started a new company. The company's name is Gear Zero. Uh, we, I can't tell you anything really about the company at this stage, but we are hiring. That's the only thing I can tell you. Uh, if you're interested, uh, definitely uh, paint me. Uh, but basically, I'm signing up for another five to ten years of that year to year grin of building another company and, and enjoying that ride. So uh, that has been that has been the story of my life so far. There are uh, a couple of things that I've learned over the past couple of years going through this. Uh, and as you saw, my idea of what a career path might look like for me has changed drastically over the past. Uh, 10, 15 years as I've learned uh, things along the way and gotten lucky and gotten introduced uh, to new concepts. And uh, these are some of the principles that have helped me navigate it. One is uh, there is luck in, in involved in this. Anybody who says, it was all my hard work and no help from anybody else or luck, is really not being honest with you. Uh, but you can put yourself in a position to get lucky. So I think that's, uh, that's the distinction that if, if opportunities present themselves to you and you don't take advantage of it and then sit back and say, well, I'm not lucky enough to have this knock on my door. Well, you really didn't position yourself in, in the right way to, to take advantage of that. So uh, luck comes around, but you can put yourself in positions, whether it's the good school, being involved in the activities that are going on, whether it's really going after free pizza, all those things really help. Uh, you can position yourself to see those opportunities that somebody else in exact same position might completely gloss over. Uh, curiosity has helped me tremendously over the years. Uh, yes, I'm doing research in X, but there's this interesting talk about this other dimension that I have not, has nothing to do with my day job. It won't help me in, in getting my PhD, it won't help me in getting my tenure. But let me go check it out. Maybe some interesting cross-pollination uh, can happen and I'll learn something from it. And it will be a worthwhile use of my time. So that is really has, uh, has been tremendous for me. Having courage is, is, is an important one as well. Every time you make a big decision, it's scary. And everybody who has done it in their lives has been through it and at some point has said, I'm just going to try it. I'm just going to heck go with it and see how it's, what is going to happen. And there are different colors of this, and you can be calculated about it and, and uh, really think about the regret minimization principles that, that, uh, that I talked about. Uh, but it takes courage to, to leave status quo. The point is, if you don't leave status quo, you, you know where you're going to be. So if you, if you want to shake things up and do something more exciting and you're, you're yearning for that, just just pull the plug and jump. Hear people's advice. I mean, uh, you have amazing people around you from your parents all the way to your faculty members and colleagues and friends and people that uh, they are trying to help you uh, professionally even in career advisors and whatnot. Uh, it's important to listen and, and analyze the input that they're giving you, but it doesn't mean that you, can, you just need to take that pre-described well-known path every single time. I think, like Samir said at the beginning, the most important thing that I've found in my life is follow what you're passionate about. Even, and some of this comes down to gut feeling. So you might not be certain about if this is the right call or not, but you feel like, I want to I wanna try this. I want to experience this. I can't go to sleep. That's all I think about. That's the, the part that I would encourage you guys not to, not to pass on. If, if there is a thing that keeps you up at night in an exciting, positive way, not in a worried way, and you're like, I can't wait to wake up and think about this more, maybe that's what you should be doing in, in your day job and uh, 
everything else figures itself out. I think that's the most important thing is that you're going to be the most happy person that you can be if you're going after that passion. And for the most part, from what I've seen, you'll probably be the most successful person as well if you're following that, that path. Uh, so so that, that's my story. If you uh, want to reach me, it's my email at year zero. Like I said, we are hiring at the company, so check out the jobs. We have three open positions right now. Really early stage, secretive stuff, in the bunker type of thing. So if, if that gets you excited, definitely reach out and, of course, go Terps. Thanks for having me.